This video is sponsored by Artless. We've been using their services for three years and I can't wait to tell you more about them later on in the video. Thank you. Nice. Look at all these lenses. You might be thinking that we're using all of them to create content, but actually, not really. We're just using these three lenses to create our videos. And I'm actually just using two. Scene one, take five, go. All right, so let's start with the lens that I got the most recently. This one I purchased off of my boy Gunders. This is the Tamron 28 to 75. When I was about to buy my first lens for the Sony a7S III, I was actually really comparing Tamron 28 to 75 to Sigma 24 to 70. I was trying to get the best bang for the buck. I was trying to get the best sharpness, the best build, the best everything. And uh, I went for the Sigma. But turns out the Sigma actually had a really fatal flaw, which made me sell it. So I sold it about a month ago. And that was the weather ceiling. That lens didn't have it at all. And the story was that I was in Dubai. I was shooting 10 minutes in the desert. It was windy and I got a bunch of sand underneath the focus ring, underneath the zoom ring. The lens was destroyed. Here's a little clip for you to enjoy. Stop! Please. So the story of that lens made me realize that it doesn't matter how sharp the lens is. What matters for me and us really the most is portability and mobility. So much more useful to have a lens which is light, compact and uh, just does the thing. It doesn't fail on you and uh, this lens is really perfect for that. So yeah, really the only con I can say about it is that uh, sometimes I do miss shooting with primes because uh, zooms tend to make us lazy because you're not moving so much, you're just you know zooming in. That's really the only bad thing I can say about this. The rest is just, it's probably the best bang for the buck you could ever get for a lens. Like this is such a great lens for those who are just starting out, you're you know experimenting with different focal lengths and this lens just covers all of them. All right, next up is an experimental one. So this is the Sigma 100 to 400 DGDN lens. It's a very cheap uh, zoom lens in comparison to the G Master 100 to 400. And it's pretty much the same thing, except uh, I guess the weather ceiling again. It's not the best from the same shoot. I got a little bit of sand underneath the focus ring, but it's definitely not as bad as the 24 to 70. But other than that, it's really sharp, great autofocus. It's, you know, not the lightest, but also not the heaviest. It does what it's supposed to, has lots of different buttons, and this is actually one of the lenses I carried in uh, my trip to Switzerland where I made the short film silence. So it definitely wasn't the lens I used the most, but when I did use it, those shots were really good. You can really get very creative with this lens, get some really creative perspectives, get some really zoomed in shots, get some details. One thing this lens does really well is actually textures. You can get really close up to subjects and really get those textures and details and uh, it's really good. Some people probably are afraid that it's f5 to f6.3 but honestly if you pair it up with the Sony a7S III just bump that ISO to 1200, uh, 8, uh, 12, 12,000, 12, 12,800 and really I never have to worry about it. Maybe the only thing if you're getting this lens you need to buy this uh, tripod color which costs an additional hundred dollars but other than that it's a really great package. Definitely not the lens you would buy first but it's a great companion to let's say the Tamron 20, uh, 28 75. All right and finally my favorite which is the Sigma 14 to 24 DGDN. I absolutely love this lens. The main concern when I was uh, about to buy it was it doesn't take front ND filters. This hood yes it's uh, built onto the lens so the solution is you put ND filters back here you don't have variable ones but uh, uh, yeah it's similar to what I have with my Mavic 2 Pro and it just takes some getting used to and it's actually really good. It's really not a deal breaker for me at all. And the main reason for that is probably that uh, because it's a wide angle lens, I usually shoot at f11 to f16 anyways. So I kind of put a medium power ND filter into it. And I don't know, if I go into a dark room, I uh, put that aperture back to f2.8. If I go, I don't know, into a brighter condition, I increase the aperture to f16 and so on and so forth. But yeah, this is the lens I used 99% of the time when I was shooting silence. I love this lens. 14 millimeters is crazy wide and you can get really creative with it. Man, it's such a great lens. Also, it doesn't extend, which makes it a perfect lens for a gimbal. It's a bit pricey, but you know, it's Sigma art, so you get what you pay for, great sharpness and all that stuff. But man, I don't really care about sharpness that much at all. On this channel, we've been showing it for years that you can use really basic equipment, really cheap lenses and still get banger res results. If you know how to color grade your footage, if you know what you want to create, people will never 
notice that you're shooting with a cheaper equipment or something like that. But yeah, this lens, incredibly sharp. Sometimes the corners are a bit soft when you're on 14 millimeter, but I don't know, I don't care at all. It's a great lens, I love it, and yeah, you should check it out. Wow. I thought that I would have three favorite lenses, but actually I don't. I have two. And that is the the Tamron 28 to 75 G2. Well, actually I used the the first variation of the lens, but you know, just got this baby as well because I mean, it looks better and uh, I had the opportunity to get it for a very good price, so can't complain about that. And I use the 17 to 28. I am using these 99% of the times. Sometimes for photography, I also use the Sony 85 1.8 and the Sony 35 1.8, which I'm using right now to film myself. But these are on my camera 99% of the times. So let me tell you why. Let's start with my favorite lens ever. That is the Tamron 28 to 75. I think rain is from old people know that I don't really care about the sharpness that much. I just like to get dope shots. I just like to experiment with the equipment I have. I really don't need the corners to be perfectly sharp. I don't care. I really don't care. If you know how to color grade footage really, really well, that's the last thing people are gonna notice about your shots. The freaking chromatic aberration and sharpness. No one cares about that, really. Of course, if you're filming some serious commercial shoots, yeah, that's a different story, but I'm just a, I'm just a typical running gun filmmaker, so to speak. So, what do I like about this lens? Portability and mobility. It's so lightweight, I can just put it in my bag and not worry about the weight at all. It just works. It's like, boom, you're on 75, boom, you're on 28. It has a 67 millimeter filter thread, which means it's, you know, not huge. I don't know what else to say, man. Uh, I'm not gonna really be speaking about it too much. I'm just gonna show you a bunch of commercial works I've done in the last three months. I filmed more than 20, 30 videos with this lens in just the last three months, so just enjoy. It's a fantastic lens, I love it. The weather sealing, I've used it in terrible conditions. Like, this is a brand new lens and it's already messed up just because I'm not that careful with my equipment because I like to experiment a lot. So yeah, enjoy. The second lens is the Tamron 17 to 28. Now, actually, when it comes to the wide angle lenses, it was a very difficult choice for me because at first I wanted to buy the Lau uh, 15 millimeter lens, which is a prime. But then I was like, you know what? I think I'm much better off with the zoom lens. And this was one of my best purchases yet because yes, 17 is not as wide as 14, but honestly, I don't really need it to be wider. But yeah, this is a killer combo. And you know why? Not only because, you know, these lenses are quite great. People say that, oh, the build quality is shit. Oh my God, how can you use this lens? Bro, they work. What's the problem? If you're on a budget, this is the perfect combo to grab because if you buy, let's say a Sony a7 III for a thousand bucks or something like that, invest another 1.5K and you're gonna get these two lenses and trust me, you're gonna be using them 99% of the times. Oh, about photography. I briefly mentioned that I was using the Sony 85 and the Sony 35 and that's only because just, it is sharper. Primes are sharper than zoom lenses, that's for sure. That's why for photography, you know, I want the picture to be as sharp as possible. But other than that, 85, I'm gonna tell you something which I thought I would never say, but I'm actually maybe considering selling this lens in the future because it's just, I use it so rarely. In the last four months, I've used it twice. Twice! So yeah, that's the end of my story. Enjoy. We interrupt this program to bring you... Let's talk a little bit more about Artlist. Artlist is a music and sound effects licensing platform with a lot of flexible plans for us filmmakers. If you do client slash commercial work, you can get unlimited downloads to both music and sound effects for a yearly subscription fee. Or if you're a content creator and do, for example, YouTube, TikTok or Instagram, you can choose their personal plan where you can pay a monthly or a yearly fee and it'll cover all of your social channels. Gotta love these flexible options, eh? We've been using their services for three years. And even though they're sponsoring this video, it's not like they're giving uh, their subscription for free for us. We're still paying every single year to use their services, but it's just such a fantastic platform because you can use their music for music videos, for commercial stuff, for TV stuff, for blogging, for events, for weddings, for everything. The latest short film, Silence, the music and the sound effects were entirely used from our list catalog. And Rainus is gonna tell you a bit more about them right now. So yeah, silence, all the sound effects, all the music from Artlist. Uh, 
Their sound effects especially is probably my new favorite thing about them. When I made Silence, I spent so little time looking for what I need and I'm super picky about sound effects, so that says a lot. Probably the best thing is that you don't have to deal with some licensing stuff really. You don't need to sign any papers or put any codes or uh, do some complicated stuff. You just download and use that song for however many projects you want, publish it wherever you want. It's so easy, so effortless, and it's probably the best investment you'll ever make when it comes to filmmaking. So yeah, check out artless.io and thank you for sponsoring this video. Hell yeah. Okay, it's time for the dream duo to be in the scene at Hell the same yeah. time. Let's just talk about the lenses, which are dope, which we would recommend it to anybody, but we just don't use them that much. We love them, but we don't use them as often. So let's begin with you. Maybe the 85, I mean, this is Gunder's lens, but uh, I did have an 85 before myself. I don't know, it's really sharp. It's honestly, this is the best lens probably for photos. If I was doing portraits again, I would be using this lens, of course. Oh yeah. But for videos, I don't know. It's just a little bit, how, how would you explain this? You, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, you know, when I look at this lens, all I want to do is shoot with 1.8, Yeah, exactly. And when shooting video, 1.8 is kind of like a hit or miss situation, especially when you're working with clients. Just like Rainy said, for photos, it's an amazing lens. It's sharp, the bokeh is nice, everything yeah. is so good. But for video, it's just, I'm good with Tamron on 75 millimeters, 2.8 aperture. You still get creamy bokeh. Mm. I just don't know. I... It's just a little bit not practical, yeah, I would say. Exactly. You know, I think when we started out, there was this uh, misconception that, oh, you just need bokeh in the shot and it's gonna look awesome. You know, if you don't have any bokeh in the shot, it's not a good shot. Yeah, I don't know, 85, it's cool. I don't know, if you have some spare cash, maybe get it, but. Yeah, uh, exactly. It's definitely not your primary lens or, you know, your bread and butter. And, Stuff like that, yeah. And plus, uh, one thing I've noticed, which actually was pretty shocking to me, is that this is a 1.8 aperture lens, this is a 2.8 aperture lens. The thing is, with the Tamron on 75 millimeters, you can get way closer than with the Sony. So sometimes, when you get close enough with the Tamron 28 to 75, you can literally get the same amount of bokeh on 2.8 aperture than you can with the Sony on 1.8, which is mm -hmm. kind of crazy to think about, but I've noticed that. Actually, that's probably the best feature of the Tamron 28 to 70, that you, could, you can get really fucking close yeah. to your subject. Literally macro shots. It's such yeah, a exactly. dope feature that you exactly. could never get with a Prime. Yeah, exactly. One thing we forgot to mention, yeah. And another, the other lenses which uh, I'm using right now uh, to film us is the Sony 35mm. I really love that lens. It's literally, good. it's one of my favorite lenses, but the reason why I don't use it is because it's just, why should I, if I can get all the shots I need with the Tamron 28 to 75? But for pictures though, 35 is the best lens ever. For pictures, that's my number one lens. Siri Anamorphics, we did a couple of videos about them before and Honestly, they're they're really great lenses, but again, this is like a cinema lens pretty much, so I could never imagine uh, using this for a run and gun situation. If I'm doing a movie or something, maybe I would actually love to use some of those anamorphics, but yeah, in a standard situation, yeah, not really, not practical again. Okay, so it's my turn. Okay, let's start with the most, in my opinion, for me, the most useless lens, which is the Tamron 150 to 500. I know a lot of nature photographers would just go, oh my God, it's so stiff. That's what she said. And uh, yeah, but many nature photographers would go crazy, and sports photographers would, would go crazy about this lens. And I completely understand it. It's a fantastic lens and you can seriously capture some amazing details with it. But for my line of work, I just don't need it. I've used this lens twice in the last six months. And yes, I did get some really fantastic results, especially we used these two lenses quite a lot on the Feel My City Sounds video. Mm. And the shots turned out great, but it's just most of the time I'm good with 75 millimeters, honestly. So yeah, this is kind of collecting dust. In the nature, it's a really fun lens to use. I remember when I was in Switzerland and there was this deer really far away and I got the, that really good shot, yeah. which I'm gonna show you right now. Uh, man, sometimes these lenses are really good, but it's not the lens you're gonna be using the most. Again, it's a really good companion that sometimes will produce amazing results because again, you can get really creative perspectives. It's more of a lens that you can just play around with and sometimes yep. you can get really banger shots, but it's not, you know. I but you know what's the best I thing? I still love it. But you know what's the best thing? Even though we don't use these lenses, when we do, they work really well and you can get amazing shots. So that's why Rainy said it's an experimental lens because yeah, experimental lens. even without this lens, yes, you can get around these situations, but it does make your life easier at some points. <laughs> a lens which I've literally used once. I took this lens to Austria to get a lot of shots and it's, an, it's a great lens, but 
yeah, there is a difference between 14 and 17 millimeters, but honestly, the difference is not huge enough for me to carry both of these lenses separately. So I rather just choose this lens, which is so much lighter than the Samyang lens. And yeah, it, it's a great lens. I can imagine that for, you know, star lapses, for time lapses and whatnot, it would, it would be a great option, but I just don't use it. Yeah, if you want to get uh, get into astrophotography, this would probably be... Is it a manual focus yeah, lens? Yeah, it's a manual focus Yeah, you need a manual focus lens. And Samyang manual focus lenses are yeah. great for that. And they're that. sharp. They're, this they're lens really is good. so sharp. Even in the corners, it's pretty sharp, so I was surprised. But this lens is crazy cheap. You can get a lens like this for like $250. And That's I'm actually crazy. selling this lens right now for literally 220 euros, which is like $250, yeah. So for the value, this is a great lens. If you're just looking for something cheap, which has amazing quality, which just works, the Samyang 14mm 2.8. You already know the story about 28-75, to Tamron. Mwah, love that lens. This lens, we're still gonna be creating a video with this lens, the Joy Anamorphic 60mm 2.9 T2, T2. lens, yes. Uh, this is actually a fantastic lens and uh, I've had a bunch of fun uh, playing around with it But it's not like I'm using it as a daily horse because I just you know anamorphic was we, we used to create a lot of anamorphic content It's because it was fun. It was a new thing for us when we get new equipment It's not like we're trying to sell it to you goes like oh boy this lens. We're not sellouts We're just having fun experimenting with the uh, with this gear. Exactly. And that's exactly what I had with this uh, Lens right here. I had a fun time playing with it and there's gonna be a video coming soon. So catch up to that Last but not least is the Viltrox 24mm 1.8 lens. Now Viltrox sent me this lens and uh, I'm kinda in a love and hate relationship with this lens. Let me just begin by saying this, it's amazing. Like the autofocus is blazing fast, the sharpness is amazing, it's even sharp on 1.8 aperture. Everything is good about this lens, but me personally, I don't really fancy the 24mm focal length. I'd much rather go the Tamron 17 to 28 or the Sony 35. It's a great lens, it looks okay, it's super lightweight, uh, you can literally put this in the smallest bag possible, but... I just... Sorry, cheap by the way. Yeah, it's super cheap as well, like $300 or I think something. Even less, yeah. Maybe now, I don't know, last time I checked it was $300, but basically, if you're, if you're a person who really wants to go into primes, you can't go wrong with this lens. The Viltrox 24mm 1.8 lens is a really, really great option. Alright, so let's discuss the sharpness topic a little bit. Like, I don't understand why people are worrying so much about what to buy. You're, Man, you're I, asking this to me. I fucking hate this <laughs> question. I really don't, do hate that question. Uh, me too, man, me too, man. Like this, for example, this lens, the, the Tamron 28-75, to it's not the sharpest lens, okay? Like compared to the... What the hell is it? Compared to the newest G2 version, this lens is a lot sharper, but... This one is sharper. No, I, I, this lens is a lot less sharper. But the thing is, it's not that noticeable, okay? If you color grade a clip well, if you give it a bit of a pop, you know, you're just gonna, not gonna notice the difference. And uh, yes, I do notice the difference because I worked with this lens for like a year. Ready? Any last uh, words to end off this video? Yeah, like stop, stop asking so much about the lenses. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Oh, that's so good. Literally, literally, it's so funny. I the silent short film it, in the title it says Sony A7S III short film, and some of you still ask, what camera did you use? If you, if you kind of want us to create these videos more, where we you know talk bullshit behind the table, let us know because we don't really like creating these types of videos. But once a month or once every two months, it's it's fun to just catch up with you guys. So uh, man, should we create a series bullshit behind the table? Yeah. Should what do you guys think about yeah. that? Your opinion, because if you want, we can definitely do so because this is you know it's it's just fun a, to us as well. Yeah, this is just a basic topics. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Bare bones stuff. So. We can talk about that, but it's definitely not like the most passionate thing or something. 2022 is gonna be a really, really massive year for us. And oh, yeah. it's like we want to do YouTube a lot. But at the same time, you have to understand that we're not those typical YouTubers who are just gonna be doing reviews all the time. It's because we most of our revenue comes not from trying to sell you guys stuff, but actually from doing commercial work because we work with a lot of big brands and uh, with a lot of big people. And... Um, yeah, that's why we're trying our best to pump out these YouTube videos, but it's probably not going to be as frequent as you might think because we still have a lot of shit to do outside YouTube, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it, it was nice seeing you again. And oh my God, haven't said this phrase in uh, many months. <coughs> wait, wait. 
All right, you know the drill. Peace out. Peace.